Good morning, everyone, and thank you, Judge Kaplan. I want to add my thanks to the Center for Court Innovation and to your staff for bringing us all together today, and I'm thrilled to see such a large crowd here today. You know, um, when I was first elected a judge, I was elected to the county court in Westchester County, the criminal court. And my very first assignment as a trial judge was to the family court. And I went there kicking and screaming. I didn't even know very candidly where the family court was. But as I like to say often and loudly, my assignment in the family court was the highlight of my time as a trial judge. I learned so many things uh, through my service on the family court bench. Most importantly, the weight of that responsibility and, uh, is crushing, as we all know firsthand, people who do those sorts of cases and the domestic violence cases. I also learned there firsthand that delay and inefficiency in our courts, especially courts dealing with family violence, is unacceptable and it only adds to the harm and the stress and the anxiety that families who come to our court seeking justice feel and experience. And my family court service shaped my professional career as a judge, as a prosecutor, and quite frankly, my personal life as a mom and a, fa a cooperative family member in many, many ways. And as you certainly know by now, on the day of my investiture as chief judge this past February, I announced that for the foreseeable future, that as chief judge, I would have one top priority, and that was to work every single day to achieve both operational and decisional excellence at every level in every court throughout this state. Our job, our core mission, is about the nuts and bolts of the work that we do and finding ways to speed the justice process and give all New Yorkers who come to our courts the service that they have come to expect and quite frankly, that they deserve. And thank to the vision of one of my predecessors, former Chief Judge uh, Judith Kay, and then Judge Judy Kluger, who was assisted in her work by one of our own, Bruna de Baez, who's here today. And thank you for being here today, Bruna, and all the work that you have done, um, as well as the Center for Court Innovation. The New York State Courts became, even back then, national leaders in designing effective DV and IDV courts focused on promoting victim safety, first and foremost, and offender accountability. And in fact, the Brooklyn IDV court became known as a national mentor court, and it became a national model for how IDV courts can and should be structured to be effective. And two decades later, it's hard to believe it's two decades later, but two decades later, we should all take pride in all of the many accomplishments we've had around these issues and the solid infrastructure that we have learned works and have built in 80 domestic violence and integrated domestic violence courts throughout our state. But of course, notwithstanding all of those successes and accomplishments and achievements, many, many challenges still remain. There are, of course, the ever-present funding and resource issues that we face year after year. And there are, of course, those frustrating and seemingly intractable cases where the same families repeatedly appear before the bench, cases where justice and resolution seem so frustratingly elusive sometimes. And yet, despite those challenges, we do continue to make progress. And thanks to your leadership, to your perseverance and the innovation as you keep searching for new and better ways to achieve justice on behalf of those families. And there are many terrific examples across the state that we can all point to. Um, a few of my favorites most recently are the Family Justice Center in Erie County, the center which is located in Buffalo, and I know we have some of our colleagues here today from Buffalo. Uh, the, the center there provides free comprehensive services for domestic violence victims and their children in one secure, convenient location. Of course, that is the ideal. And thanks to the 8th District's leadership and Judge Ferraledo and her staff and their commitment to collaboration, 
DV advocates from Haven House conduct intake assessments and connect petitioners to the services they need to escape abuse. And those services range from legal services and emergency orders of protection to safety planning, medical care, and other foundational services. And currently, CCI and the 8th District staff are working on a risk assessment tool to improve the quality of information provided to our judges there about the dangers and risks that are posed to each petitioner who comes through the doors. In Rochester, the Monroe Family Court has designed a domestic violence part that provides litigants with safety and comfort at each juncture that they meet. And petitioners enter there through the probation department, similar to my home county in Westchester, where trained probation officers conduct risk assessment reviews and help draft petitions. They then move to a private, secluded waiting area where court advocates and the legal services await them. A children's center, very important of course, is only steps away. Toiletries and other living essentials thoughtfully, very thoughtfully and creatively, make a, are made available for those facing displacement from their homes. And through it all, family court clerks, our devoted family court clerks, go, do, guide our petitioners seamlessly through the process and the building as they receive services and appear in our courtrooms, always keeping exposure to respondents to an absolute minimum. These are just two examples of how we've worked to eliminate barriers to justice, promoting safety, and providing better services to litigants in domestic violence cases. Now, of course, in order to accomplish our shared goals, we have to be willing to step out and take the lead in convening and building the necessary networks with community stakeholders and partner agencies at the state and local levels and to work collaboratively with them to start a new standard of excellence in New York's DV courts. Particularly in the domestic violence area, these networks must be broad and inclusive, as we've learned. Probation officers, prosecutors, defense counsel, child protective services, attorneys for the children who are specially trained in domestic violence, advocates, substance abuse professionals, the list does seem endless, but they all play an important role, and they all, each and every one of them, must be brought to the table for discussion and inclusion. As I expressed to you earlier, my personal experience in the trial court was both fascinating and instructive on so, so many levels. I learned, most importantly, I learned there that when we demand excellence, from the agencies and the lawyers who appear before us, meeting deadlines, providing meaningful updates and reports, being prepared when they arrive in court, that not only do they perform, but we as the judges responsible for those cases are far better positioned to facilitate effective and lasting outcomes for the litigants searching for answers and solutions to their most foundational issues and problems. It also became very clear to me as a trial judge and then as a prosecutor and the elected district attorney in my county at that time that these important and necessary relationships need to be nurtured outside of the courtroom through appropriate ongoing dialogue and communication. When I became district attorney of Westchester County, I convened a large group of justice leaders to build a family justice center and to improve our service in Westchester County. We devoted countless, and I mean literally thousands of hours to examining together child and domestic violence fatalities so that in the future we could better coordinate our respective roles and resources and responsibilities to strengthen justice system response and lower the risk of violence for families. You now have that opportunity and the challenge of building similar local networks to take your courts to the next level. Judge Kaplan and her staff are here to help you do that and to support you through training conferences like this one, as well as with the technical support and guidance that you will need to do this work. 
and they are committed to helping you re-examine operations in your courts and your parts as we strive together to achieve excellence in resolving family violence cases. How you prioritize and target your resources will be driven by your local conditions and challenges. In the fourth district, for example, working alongside Judge Caruso's office, a working group of court staff and counsel from Judge Kaplan's office is methodically re-examining the protocols of their IDV and DV courts. Another working group in the fifth district, led by Judge Tormey's office, is exploring how to take advantage of a federal grant to support access to the courts in rural areas for traditionally underserved groups like the elderly. And many of you, and Judge Kaplan referenced this, are familiar with our recently implemented program on remote access to orders of protection, which allows abuse victims to obtain emergency orders of protection through e-filing and Skype video technology, a simply brilliant idea. These are just a few examples of what we are doing all around the state, consistent with the Excellence Initiative to improve the delivery of justice in domestic violence cases. And for all of you who are judges in this room, I say to you, you are the leaders in our effort to achieve this goal. We cannot achieve these goals without your commitment, without your hard work, and without your leadership. We are depending on you to motivate and inspire your staff, to mobilize our justice partners who work with us, and to introduce local reforms that will produce fair, effective and timely court responses to domestic violence. There can be no greater challenge for us, no greater satisfaction than to make a positive difference in the life of vulnerable families. It is my hope that this symposium will enhance the knowledge, the insights and the inspiration you need to carry out the challenging work that lies ahead of you. I want to once again thank you all for being here and thank you for the important work that you do each and every day to bring justice to domestic violence victims in our courts throughout the state. Thank you for being here.